Developmental screening is a brief assessment procedure designed to identify children at high risk for delayed development or school failure. One thing to know right away about screening is that uh, there are several characteristics that you should always be looking for. First, screening should be brief. It should take 15 to 20 minutes. With younger children, it may take 20 to 30 minutes, but that would be the absolute maximum. It needs to be efficient. It should involve as few trained personnel as necessary for every child who is screened. It should be inexpensive in the sense that the cost per child should be very, very low. A, um, a fourth characteristic is that screening should be objectively scored. It's, it's something that should have essentially rules so that we know um, whether a child has passed or has failed an item and uh, how closely the, ca the child came to doing that or to not doing that, um, rather than having it be very subjective. Screening should be reliable. It should be something that is repeatable uh, and get, that where you get very similar kind of results uh, when you re-administer it. It should be valid, which is to say it needs to be accurate. It should be as culture-free and culture-fair as possible. Different cultures will, will uh, in, inculcate in children different expectations and will always be some things that won't quite be, uh, be the same from uh, one ethnicity to another, from one culture to another, but we want to be as fair and as free of cultural bias as possible. And then finally, uh, screening should be broadly, the kind of screening I'm talking about, should be broadly developmental in focus rather than very achievement oriented. Let me now give you uh, three or four different uh, uh, statements about what screening does. First of all, it identifies children who may be in need of further evaluation. The basic purpose here is to form a hypothesis or to create a hypothesis about whether this is a child who is at risk. And then screening forms something of what we call a successive hurdles approach to identification. In other words, if uh, a child uh, is unable to pass the screening, that's the first hurdle. From there, the child would be referred for further evaluation, and if the child doesn't pass that, or in other words, if the child doesn't do well on that, then that would be a child who's likely a child who's at risk. A second purpose of screening is to assist teachers in getting to know their children at the outset of school. Most developmental screening takes place either in the spring or the fall, pre preceding a child's entry into a program, um, or in the first six weeks of the child's entry into the program, and it gives a quick overview of skills um, in cognition, language, fine motor, adaptive, gross motor. Um, so it's not the same thing as a full-scale assessment. It's an overview, a brief assessment. A third thing that uh, developmental screening does is to help prevent severe delays or disorders from going unrecognized. Uh, screening does not, uh, does not, it cannot be used to label or make a diagnostic decision about a child, but it is something that can help us to, to identify and find out whether or not this is a child who may be at risk and we have to learn something about. Now those are the three things that I would say screening does. What are some of the things screening doesn't do? Well, I've already mentioned one. It, isn't the, it should not be used as a source of a diagnostic label. Uh, it, as I said earlier, it's only a hypothesis that has to be confirmed or disconfirmed by, with further information. And it's only then that a diagnostic label can be assigned. D uh, screening should not be used as a, a school entry test or as a readiness test. Our job, in fact, is to take every child who comes to us and uh, to try to fashion or shape a curriculum and an experience that works best for every single child. So in that regard, it, isn't, it shouldn't be used to, uh, to de uh, deny a child entry into a program. It's also um, not a, an achievement test. It's not something that can be used on a pre and post basis because it's a narrow slice of, uh, of, a ch uh, of children's uh, achievements and accomplishments and, uh, and capacities. Uh, and, and, it, 
and all screening tests have what we call a ceiling. Um, that is, there's, uh, it is possible to get a perfect score on, on a developmental screening instrument um, simply because, as I said, it's meant to identify children at high risk. It's not meant to identify children who are extremely proficient. And so in that regard, it, uh, it, it, it can have a ceiling and we won't be able to know how much further a child might go because that's not its purpose. It can't, in other words, be used as a pre-post accountability exam. I mentioned earlier it's not the same thing as a readiness test. A readiness test is, uh, is something that is used for very, very different purposes. It focuses on uh, readiness tests, focus on children's current skill acquisition and performance. They're highly influenced by children's previous opportunities uh, to learn, and readiness tests are used for class placement, for curriculum planning, and for identifying whether a child can benefit from a specific curriculum. Developmental screening, in contrast, is used to identify which children are potentially in need of early intervention or additional assistance in order to, uh, to achieve their, their, their goals, in order to meet their potential. Developmental screening tests focus on a child's ability to acquire skills. They enable children to demonstrate their developmental potential. So developmental screening tests, the focus is on children's ability to acquire skills, whereas uh, readiness test, um, the, the focus is on what skills a child has already acquired. Uh, in these ways, um, they are quite different. Uh, readiness tests, some sample items might be the child's name, color, being able to um, identify colors, being able to print uh, letters, uh, picture recognition, some visual discrimination, rote counting, counting and identifying um, body parts. Um, with, with developmental screening, using in particular the, the easy um, as, as an example, the items are really quite different. First, they can be collected into categories such as visual motor adaptive, where we do block building, copy forms, and visual sequential memory. This helps us to understand about how a child is able to coordinate his or her uh, visual uh, capacities um, with, uh, uh, with, with, with the child's um, uh, fine motor abilities. Uh, another area uh, that's found in the easy is language and cognition. Number concept rather than just counting. Uh, verbal expression rather than just uh, identifying objects. Uh, verbal reasoning, um, which, uh, which comes about from uh, being able to complete analogies. Auditory sequential memory, whether the child can remember um, items, particular items in a particular sequence. And then also the easy has a section on gross motor of balancing, hopping, and skipping. So these are really quite different, but as I said, the, the purpose of developmental screening overall is that it is a brief assessment procedure designed to identify children at high risk for school failure, and that is a critical ingredient in early identification, a critical ingredient in primary prevention of, of later school problems, and it's something that um, we hope that all children uh, prior to, uh, to kindergarten and through kindergarten will have an opportunity to experience.